Please be seated. Order, please. The Honorable the Minister of Finance, Deputy yeah. Premier. Thank you. Speaker, I move, seconded by the Premier, that this House approves in general the budgetary policy of the government. The motion is that this House approves in general the budgetary policy of the government. The Honorable the Minister of Finance, Deputy Premier. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday was the first day of spring, a day of renewal and anticipation of the brighter days ahead. Much like Newfoundland and Labrador, as we no longer stand at the precipice, but at the peak of opportunity, growth, and prosperity. Much progress has been made over the last four years under the Fury government. We are transforming and improving health care with record investment, a focus on primary care and implementing the health accord, transforming and improving. anticipation of the brighter days ahead. Much like Newfoundland and Labrador, as we no longer stand at the precipice, but at the peak of opportunity, growth, and prosperity. Much progress has been made over the last four years under the Fury government. We are transforming and improving health care with record investment, a focus on primary care and implementing the health accord transforming and improving. We've helped seniors with a 15% increase in the seniors benefit and paying for driver medicals. We've helped businesses with greater tax credits and raising the threshold of the health and post-secondary education tax to help businesses save money. And we're just getting started. In this budget, in a year we celebrate 75 years of confederation with Canada, we deliver no new taxes, tax increases, or fee increases. A budget that helps make life more affordable for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We're going to continue with the 8.05 cent per litre reduction in the provincial tax on gas. We're going to continue. We're going to continue with the 50% reduction in the cost of registering passenger vehicles like trucks and taxis. Continue with the home heating supplement for furnace and stove oil. And continuing with the elimination of the retail sales tax on home insurance. We're going to reduce the small business tax rate as well as make meaningful action to cut red tape and speed processes to support business and drive economic activity. We're making record investments in health care, in the well-being of seniors, in poverty reduction, and in housing. We're making record investments in infrastructure for health, education, and housing. This budget is one our forebears hoped that we would one day present when they envisioned a stronger, smarter, self-sufficient, sustainable Newfoundland and Labrador. We stand on their shoulders as we enter the spring for Newfoundland and Labrador, a time of regeneration, rejuvenation, and hope a time of renewal and optimism. We're transforming the province's finances. 
Newfoundland and Labrador has faced generations of financial uncertainty. Every year, because, of the spend, because we spend more than we earn, we add to the debt and burden ourselves and future generations with the expensive cost of borrowing. This impacts our ability to invest in services, programs, and infrastructure we all deserve and need. This government has been focused, determined, prudent, and responsible in managing the finances of this province. The fiscal plan we embarked on in 2020 is yielding results. Continued effort and diligence is required. The strategic plan set a course for strong financial management, expenditure control, continued transformation and modernization, as well as effective treasury management and a focus on debt restructuring and repayment. This together with a stronger population and economic growth will propel Newfoundland and Labrador to a brighter future. We have made strong financial choices to balance our budget, set aside money to pay debt, and strengthen our liquidity so that we have the cash reserves available to meet our obligations. We improved the financing of the inherited Muskrat Falls project through a $5.2 billion rate mitigation agreement with the Government of Canada, thereby ensuring your electricity rates do not double. <laughs> By launching a European borrowing program, we help diversify our investors, which will improve results. Like all Canadian provinces, money is borrowed by issuing bonds in the capital markets. In 24-25, we expect net new borrowings to be the same as last year at $1.6 billion. Bonds are publicly traded and primarily held by a broad base of institutional investors. To ensure we have the funds available when the principal and the bonds come due, this government ensures that sinking <coughs> funds are attached to the debt. We have also made legislative changes to ensure returns on those funds are optimized. This means that, for example, our longest term bonds, which come due in 2040, sorry, 2054, will be fully paid at maturity rather than refinanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important. <laughs> this is important for future generations of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We also established the Newfoundland and Labrador Future Fund so that we could reinvest revenue from one-time sources and non-renewable resources. In Budget 2024, we are contributing $72.4 million to the Future Fund, bringing total contributions to $358.8 million. <laughs> Over the past five years, our deficit has decreased from $1.5 billion in 2020-2021 to $152 million, estimated in 24-25, which represents just 1.5% of revenues. Balance is achieved next year and for the foreseeable future. Revenue in 2024-25 is forecast to be the highest in Newfoundland and Labrador's history, coupled with one of the highest rates of economic growth forecast for 2024 among provinces. This past summer marked the first time in 12 years that the province received an upgraded credit rating and demonstrates that our financial situation is moving in the right direction. I want to thank the hardworking, dedicated, skilled professionals within the Department of Finance who work diligently every day to ensure strong financial management. Oil projections. For 2024-25, oil is projected to be, to be US $82 per barrel, which is uh, an which is, the, which is informed by 10 different independent forecasters. The Canada-US exchange rate is forecast to be 74.7 cents. Our economic outlook. 
forecasts of economic indicators show Newfoundland and Labrador is having one of the highest rates of economic growth in 2024 among provinces. Here, here. Here, here. Opportunities in green energy, lower carbon oil, mining, and aquaculture industries are boosting economic activity. Newfoundland and Labrador's real GDP is forecast to increase by 5.1% in 2024, primarily due to a strong export growth. The Terra Nova project has returned to production and the newly converted refinery in Come By Chance started production of renewable diesel in February. Development work on the West White Rose project, in addition to continued government investment in infrastructure projects, such as the new mental health and addictions facility, will continue to support construction activity in the province. Real exports are expected to increase by 16.7%, driven mainly by higher oil, iron ore, and nickel production. Total employment is forecast to increase by 0.9% in 2024, partly due to increased construction activity associated with increased housing starts and the West White Rose project. <coughs> the unemployment rate is expected to remain on par with a record low in 2023 at 10% 10 in 2024. <laughs> Household income is expected to increase by 4.9% in 2024 and is anticipated to continue to support retail sales, which are forecast to increase by 2.8% in 2024. Overall, inflation is forecast to be 2.6% in 2024. Continuing the strong population growth seen in 2023, the province's population is projected to rise by 0.8% percent in 2024 with net natural losses being more than offset by international immigration. <laughs> here, here. Capital investment is expected to increase by 3 percent to 9.6 billion dollars in 2024 as construction activity associated with the West White Rose project continues and residential construction rebounds from decline seen in 2023. Affordability. Over half a billion dollars in investments have been provided to the people of the province to help with the cost of living. As announced earlier, we will continue these measures in this budget. In addition, the new Poverty Reduction Plan provides incremental investments totaling $41 million in budget 2024. This is in addition to the upwards of a billion dollars that is allocated annually for social programming and support for those experiencing low income. We've increased the child benefit by 300%. Positioning it as one of the highest in the country. The new Early Childhood Nutrition Supplement is the best in Canada. We've increased funding for the school food programs with the goal that all children up to grade nine will be able to access healthy food in school. <laughs> Improvements to the income support program will result in some people receiving almost four times their previous benefits. We are implementing a targeted basic income pilot for eligible individuals aged 60 to 64. Pilot participants will receive an increase in payments to match federal seniors' benefits to people aged 65 and over. Metrobus or GO bus passes are provided to people in receipt of income support, seniors receiving the guaranteed income supplement and youth receiving services from the Youth Services Program in St. John's, Mount Pearl, and Paradise. Including accessible transportation initiatives, we are investing close to $3 million in transportation to help citizens to access employment opportunities, education, services, and promote inclusion. 
Last year's increase in the income supplement benefits more than 150,000 families and individuals. And the seniors benefit helps almost 50,000 seniors age 65 and over. The four year, more than 130 million federal provincial fuel switching and energy efficiency incentive is helping households transition to electricity, which is cheaper, greener, and more reliable way to heat a home. Along with our federal partners, we are allocating over $21 million to support individuals and families with rental assistance in the private market and $10.7 million for homeowners in low income to complete, to complete repairs, accessibility modifications, and energy efficiency rebates, refits. Transformation and modernization. In the past four years, we set a path to transform and modernize government, improve services, and ensure better results for the people of the province. There has been much progress, and we are focused on achieving even more. Our government is steadfast that to achieve our goals, it is paramount that continuous improvement, service excellence, and accountability be focal points of our ambitious agenda. We are expanding efforts to address red tape and improve service delivery. We will introduce navigators, beginning with the Department of Industry, Energy, and Technology, to work hand in hand with business to help make it easier to access government and improve business processes. As unnecessary, As unnecessary, time-consuming, and impeding regulations and red tape are identified, they will be eliminated or improved to ensure more timely, efficient, effective regulatory affairs. We've committed the financial, human, and strategic resources and will work with the business community to identify and eliminate red tape while facilitating and supporting development. We are transforming our economy, seizing and driving opportunities. We must be agile and nimble, moving at the speed of light. To ensure success, we are introducing an Opportunities NL Secretariat to Executive Council that ensures an across-government strategic fo focus that will interlink departments, agencies, communities, and stakeholders. This will attract investment, strengthen exports, and enhance the productivity of local businesses. As the economy transforms, we will focus on jobs of the future. The objective is to align economic strategies, education, and skills development, as well as improve labor market data and analysis. We will create a council comprised of relevant departments, Memorial University, College of the North Atlantic, as well as business and labor groups and representation from private colleges. To build on the development of a new, solely dedicated cabinet portfolio and to better address the changing requirements of housing, including the need for better integration and solutions for the future, the Provincial Housing Corporation will be integrated into core government. <laughs> to create safer roadways, we will begin to expand the use of traffic enforcement cameras. <laughs> Transforming Health. Health Accord NL set a clear vision to reimagine how we deliver health care. We've been leaders in Canada in actioning a plan to improve how and where residents access care, and addressing the social determinants of health that are linked to our overall well-being. Our commitment is backed by the consecutive years of record investments in health care. Family care teams. Health care professionals welcome working in a team environment where they can work to the full scope of practice. Patients can access an appropriate level of care for their medical condition. As a result of our new family care teams, 
more than 50,000 residents are now connected with a team of health care professionals. There are presently 19 family care teams in various stages of implementation throughout the province. This year, we are continuing to take steps toward reaching our goal of 35 teams. Budget 2024 includes $30 million to hire additional health care providers for existing teams and to create new teams, some of which include Bayvert and Springdale Region, Lewisport, Portugal Cove St. Phillips, and Downtown St. John's. More teams are being funded and will be announced throughout the year. Healthcare innovation. At the heart of a reimagined service delivery is the better flow of information, how it is shared between professionals as well as patients, and how that can contribute to better health outcomes. In Budget 2024, we continue to transform healthcare by allocating $620 million over 10 years to provide Newfoundlanders and Labradorians with a new modernized health information system. And this includes a $16 million investment in this year. This investment will allow patients to receive care from the comfort of their homes, allow records to be easily shared with health providers, reduce administrative burden, reduce the amount of time patients are required to stay in hospital, decrease the amount uh, and number of missed appointments, create better communications between health facilities, allow patients to self-schedule appointments, improve ease of patient follow-up, and better protect your personal health information. Budget 2024 also will invest $5 million in My Health NL, which will provide Newfoundlanders and Labradorians with access to a digital front door to access health information and services. Through a user-friendly app and online platform, citizens will have easy access to health care services, including booking certain appointments, accessing their personal health information, and health educational resources through digital channels. It revolutionizes the delivery of care by empowering patients to have a more active role in their treatment of their health, make informed decisions, and navigate the health care system will also connect with other projects such as a virtual primary care service. Reimagined service delivery. Our government continues to invest in stroke care, the use of endovascular throm thrombectomy to remove blood clots causing stroke has led to improved stroke outcomes and reduced patients' hospital stays in our province. Budget 2024 includes $850,000 to expand this treatment and continue the program's success. An additional $750,000 is allocated to enhance inpatient stroke services, which will help improve patient outcomes and decrease readmission rates. Last year, we introduced mobile primary care, whereby a mobile doctor's office will visit communities. Supported by a $1.3 million investment, mobile care will expand so that communities that are presently undersourced and under-resourced can better access required care. A mobile x-ray service pilot project will begin with a target audience of residents from select long-term care homes and personal care homes requiring non-urgent x-ray services. We continue to invest to expand the cardiac catheterization flights, also known as Heart Force One, to fly more people to get the care they need. Our government is committed to establish a cardiovascular and stroke institute. As part of this initiative, we will fund cardiovascular and stroke care navigators for each zone within the provincial 
health, healthy, uh, health authority creating an in-person contact for patients and providers. These navigators will improve access for patients and support <coughs> providers and extend the reach of the provincial cardiovascular and stroke program and across the continuum of care. To increase access to cath at cardiac catheterization even further, budget 2024 includes $6.5 million to operationalize a fourth interventional cardiac suite. This will enhance, this will enhance accessibility, decrease patient wait times, and improve patient flow. The sugar sweetened beverage tax is designed to encourage residents to make healthier choices that can help reduce the consumption of excess sugars associated with the increased risk of developing chronic diseases. As noted by the World Health Organization, if governments tax products like sugary drinks, they can reduce suffering and save lives. They can also cut health costs and increase revenues to invest in health services. This year, Revenue generated from the tax on sugar-sweetened beverages will be used to provide greater health care and peace of mind for more people with type 1 diabetes and their families. Our investment of almost $1.8 million for the expanded continuous glucose monitoring program so people with type 1 diabetes up to the age of 25 in the insulin pump program can test their blood sugars more frequently and easily and allow them and their family members to rest assured that they are okay. Yeah. Those pregnant who have gestational diabetes will also be eligible for the program, which will lead to better outcomes for both the parent and child. Supported by an investment of $10 million, the expansion of virtual care services will increase access to primary care and emergency care services. This expansion adds capacity to the system and complements family care teams, emergency departments, and urgent care clinics. It does not replace them. Budget 2024 includes more than $1.1 million to the Lionel Kelland Hospice in Grand Falls, Windsor, so it can continue to provide quality palliative and end-of-life care. Yeah. This brings our annual investment to $2.3 million. Mental health. This fiscal year, construction is expected to be completed on the new 102-bed Adult Mental Health and Addiction Center. This facility, which is set to open in the spring of 2025, will bring both physical and mental health together in one location, recognizing the intrinsic value of, holistic, of the holistic approach. <laughs> At the community level, more than $15 million has been allocated to expand options for individuals seeking help, seeking help for mental health and addictions throughout the province. Recognizing the value of the harm reduction teams, which includes nurse practitioners, psychiatric re registered nurses, peer supports, pharmacists, occupational therapists, addictions counselors, and outreach staff in the care of vulnerable individuals, we've allocated $900,000 to expand the team. More than $1 million is allocated to support the expansion of the mobile crisis response teams to include communities and surrounding areas of Sheshashi, Stephenville, Twillingate, New World Island, Bjorn, Clarenville, and Conception Bay North. <laughs> Integrated ambulance system. We are making fundamental changes to how ambulance services are being delivered. In doing so, we are improving emergency health care delivery. With ambulance, in, ambulance integration, the system will evolve beyond transporting patients to hospitals. Once fully implemented, our new system will deliver emergency interventions to the patient where and when they are needed. 
The new system will be technologically driven, enabling quicker access to life-saving interventions. Expanded use of helicopters, including a new helipad on Bell Island, will better service rural and remote communities. <laughs> Non-emergency transport options will be expanded to help people get to medical appointments and access the services they need. The new integrated ambulance system will reduce fragmentation, create operational efficiencies, and ultimately improve response times. This year, approximately $8 million is allocated in new funding to add more than 20 drugs to the formulary to treat patients with cancer, lupus, sinus infections, and those needing a transplant. This brings the budget of the prescription drug program to almost $200 million. <laughs> Recruitment and retention. We have been bold in our global approach to attract new healthcare professionals to work side by side with the thousands of highly trained women and men that make our healthcare system run smoothly. In collaboration with the Provincial Health Authority, more than 450 nurses and more than 80 physicians have been recruited to work here at home. We have been bold in our global approach to attract new healthcare professionals to work side by side with the thousands of highly trained women and men that make our healthcare system run smoothly. In collaboration with the Provincial Health Authority, more than four, 2024 includes an additional $2 million to increase the number of faculty of medicine seats for Newfoundlanders and Labradorian, an expansion of 10 seats, leading to even more residents completing their education right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. <laughs> A record hiring of nursing graduates last year has benefited, benefited the system, and we've been working with this year's graduating class to ensure they stay here too. Mm -hmm. Budget 2024 includes $10 million for recruitment and retention to sustain the progress we are making. To support new nurses entering our workforce, Budget 2024 allocates more than five $500,000 for a new nursing mentorship education program to compensate experienced nurses who mentor nursing graduates. Here, here. Seniors. In addition to the $70 million in this year's budget to support almost 50,000 seniors through the seniors benefit, budget 2024 includes a new $10 million commitment to introduce a seniors well-being plan which will improve health and social service delivery for seniors. Our plan will optimize health, well-being, independence and self-determination of older adults with timely access to coordinated supports and services in a safe and caring environment that maintains dignity and respect. The Seniors Wellbeing Plan will introduce a Seniors Care Grant that will provide additional benefits to low-income seniors living at home to support services such as snow clearing and grocery delivery. A caregiver benefit will provide financial assistance to clients who have higher care needs, providing with the supports they need to live at home longer. For seniors living in coastal Labrador communities, a new supplement for food and heating is also being introduced as part of this plan. Yeah. 
The Seniors Wellbeing Plan provides health care protection for seniors through enhanced immune response influenza vaccines to the entire 65 plus population in addition to those living in congregate settings. These initiatives are in addition to, the, to establishing the Centers of Excellence of Aging, which will lead to improved access to quality health care for seniors. These centers are supported by a $6 million investment and include the, incre the creation of acute care of elderly units and seniors friendly emergency care at St. Clair's Mercy Hospital, the new Western Memorial Regional Hospital and the new emergency department at the Health Sciences Center. These age friendly initiatives are aligned with our ongoing commitment to improving more timely access to such interventions as cataract surgery, cardiac care, and hip and knee joint replacements. These procedures will help improve the health and well-being of seniors who experienced a heightened need of these interventions. $200,000 is allocated for the Senior Social Inclusion Initiative. This initiative provides funding to eligible seniors serving clubs and organizations to help increase intergenerational interactions and participation in healthy aging and mental health and well-being activities. Transforming the social determination, determinants of health. Addressing the social determinants of health was a key element of the health accord and much progress is being made. Housing. Access to stable, safe, affordable housing is a major factor in a person's well-being. This year's record investment in housing includes nearly $44 million in new funding to create affordable homes and repair and re maintain existing ones, and $26 million to support those experiencing or at risk of homelessness or intimate partner violence through emergency shelters, transition homes, and the supportive living program. Investments include more than $36 million over four years to build over 100 new public housing homes in Cornerbrook, Central Newfoundland, and in Labrador West. An $8 million increase for repairs, maintenance, and renovations budget to ensure existing affordable housing is maintained and available for families who need it. Close to $14 million for the Transitional Supportive Living Initiative in St. John's, which includes 140 rooms with wraparound supports. And $12 million over three years to repair and modernize public housing in the Nazi communities of Nain, Hopedale, and Makovic. These initiatives will complement the expansion of the Gathering Place, which will add 50 new supportive housing units and 40 low barrier emergency shelter beds to the system. In their time of need, people know they can rely on it to get a warm meal, clothing, health care, dental health, and counseling. This year, an additional $1.5 million is being provided to the gathering place to ensure it can continue to provide valuable services to its clients. <laughs> Through our five-point plan to help improve access to housing that is affordable, we set in motion a series of actions to incentivize the rapid construction of rental housing and help fam families transition from the rental market to home ownership. To implement this plan, Budget 2024 includes more than $50 million for the Housing Loan Development Program, $4 million for the Secondary and Basement Suite Program, which provides homeowners with a forgivable loan of up to $40,000 to create an affordable home, affordable apartment within their home. More than $3 million for the HST rebate on new residential rental properties and $225,000 for the new first-time home buyers program 
To date, nearly 100 families have been approved under the program, with 20 families having secured new homes. Additionally, Crown land is being made available for rental housing development with plans to approve projects in the coming months and low interest loans, uh, loan financing being available through the rental housing development program. Active and healthy living. Physical activity is an essential component of a person's well-being. To help make it easier to access, we are investing more than $7 million to support recreation, physical activity, athlete and support development. More than $800,000 in the Labrador, support, Labrador Sport Travel Subsidy. This program helps with air travel for athletes age 18 years of age and under, Special Olympians, and sports organizations to participate in provincial competitions and development camps. And in the Physical Activity Tax Credit, so that individuals and families can access recreational and sporting activities. This credit provides a refundable tax credit of up to $348 for families. This year, we are taking substantial steps to transform sporting and recreational infrastructure to build much needed capacity. These include $13 million to build a new sport and well-being indoor domed turf facility, which will include exercise, rehabilitation, as well as allow for year-round sports and recreational activity. $1 million for upgrades at Marble Mountain. $900,000 to support the renewal of the Pepe Park Pippi Park Grant Campground, which includes comfort stations, paving, and recreational facilities. $550,000 for upgrades to the Virginia Park Community Center. And we are committing to a new multiplex provincial recreational facilities in the St. John's metro region, region to ensure available infrastructure is in place for a growing community. We are now just over a year away from hosting the nation in the 2025 Canada Summer Games. The Games will leave a large legacy infrastructure, an updated ACT arena, modernized tennis facilities, and a new Fortis Canada Games track and field complex, all of which will contribute to the health and well-being of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. <laughs> education. Newfoundland and Labrador has the highest educated teaching workforce and spends the most per capita in Canada on its educational system. To develop a targeted approach to transforming and modernizing the educational system, we have announced an education accord. This initiative will result in a 10-year education accord with short, medium, and long-term goals for an education system that, that creates better outcomes for students and learners. Early learning and childcare. In the last four years, we have reduced the cost for families from over $40 a day for childcare to now just $10 a day. This initiative saves money for families, provides high quality early learning opportunities for children, and ensures that primary care givers can enter the workforce. Continued supports to develop and attract qualified early childhood educators is essential, as is the announced wage grid enhancements to help create new spaces. In recognizing the value of early childhood educators, we will continue to offer additional allowances and bonuses to early childhood educators, provide the early childhood educator recruitment and retention grant, and allocate $2.7 million to offer bursaries and grants for students completing post-secondary programming to become an early childhood educator. <laughs> Child care for health care workers in St. John's, Cornerbrook, 
and Bona Vista will be operational this fiscal year. Yeah. Our public K-12 school system, safe and reliable transportation to and from school is a key part of accessing quality education. This year we'll complete the elimination of the 1.6 kilometer policy to access school bus services. The cost of implementation is close to $20 million. Budget 2024 includes close to $3 million to increase student assistant hours and hire more student assistants. This will help meet students' needs in the classroom and when traveling on school buses. This year, we are increasing the teaching services budget by $3 million to help meet the needs of the student population. Here, here. This will bring the total budget to in excess of $560 million. Budget 2024 includes $850,000 for recruitment and retention initiatives in hard to fill rural, remote, and isolated areas. These initiatives will build on efforts made last year, as well as the information garnered from the recent Teachers Think Tank. These will help further enhance activities that recognize the value of teachers and educators. The continued phase-in of the Kids in the Know Body Safety Program in K-9 classrooms will further enhance personal safety for children and youth. Post-secondary. Newfoundland and Labrador has a strong post-secondary uh, public education system. Budget 2024 will provide College of the North Atlantic with an additional $2 million for a total of $71 million in their operating grant. Memorial University will receive more than $370 million for its core operating grant for the Faculty of Medicine and to support the continuation of satellite sites for the Faculty of Nursing. Our government will continue to fund the student relief so, sorry, student fee relief to offset Memorial University's campus renewal fee for the 24-25 academic year. Yeah. This will result in approximately $500 in annual savings for a full-time undergraduate student and will help keep money in their pockets and their families. To help maintain one of Canada's most robust student assistance programs, which is highlight, highlighted by non-repayable and forgivable grants, this year we are investing close to $30 million. This assistance program helps ease the financial pressures on students and helps build a higher wage workforce. Libraries, in recognition of the vital role of public libraries, this year we will be providing an additional $680,000 for the Public Information and Library Resources Board. This will bring its budget this year to almost $13 million. Transforming communities, healthy, sustainable communities are essential for the well-being, growth, and development of Newfoundland and Labrador. Further to last year's increase of $3 million for municipal operating grants, Budget 2024 includes an additional $3 million to the base funding of these grants, bringing the total annual budget to $28 million. This represents a two-year increase of almost 30%. This year, we are also investing $50 million over five years to support water and wastewater projects. This year, we are, inv we are investing an additional $400,000 for municipal training opportunities. This reflects a doubling of funding available for municipal training and $400,000 for municipal fire departments to support their response to incidents outside their municipal boundaries. 
to create more sustainable communities, $167 million is allocated for initiatives such as the Canada Community Building Fund, Municipal Operating Grants, Community Enhancement Employment Program, and Special Assistance Grants. These initiatives provide funding for communities to maintain operations and deliver services. An additional investment of $7 million will go towards infrastructure improvements to safeguard communities on the southwest coast from extreme weather. We have spent approximately $60 million to support the recovery from Hurricane Fiona. We have been ambitious in revitalizing public infrastructure. We have seen the opening of a new regional hospital in Cornerbrook. We have made record investments in transportation infrastructure and worked to advance new hospitals, new family care teams, new schools, and much more well is underway. This year, $1.1 billion is allocated for infrastructure projects. This considerable investment will help generate close to $600 million in economic activity and create hundreds of new jobs of, for the province's skilled tradespeople. Health. $11 million is allocated to advance work on the new Cardiovascular and Stroke Institute, replacing St. Clair's Mercy Hospital and Long-Term Care Centre in Bay St. George. $35 million for capital equipment improvements at other health facilities, including new family care teams, urgent care clinics, and ambulatory clinics. And $3 million one-time investment for capital equipment improvements at health facilities, which includes new equipment at family care teams, urgent care, and ambulatory care. This is in addition to the annual investment of $32 million. Early learning in childhood and education. $41 million for new schools in Cartwright, Kenmount Terrace, Portugal Cove St. Phillips, and Pelly's Island. Over the next three years, we will spend $146 million on these projects, $30 million over the next five years to revitalize the fleet of school buses, and $50,000 to begin planning for a new high school in paradise. Injustice. $15 million over two years to enhance such things as open-ear courts, video conferencing, new cameras, and program trailers at Her, at Her Majesty's Penitentiary, His Majesty's Penitentiary. $8 million to continue work to replace Her, His, Manager, His Majesty's Penitentiary and $5 million for the ongoing redevelopment of the Martin Gallant Building in Stephenville Crossing, which houses the provincial court and other government offices. Arts and culture, $8 million to advance a new mid-sized theater in downtown St. John's. And $5 million over five years for upgrades at the rooms. Transportation, close to $300 million for upgrades to provincial highways and roads, including completion of the Team Guzhu Highway. $29 million for improvements to the fleet of ferries and wharfs, which is in addition to the more than $75 million spent annually to operate them. And and an annual expenditure of $30 million to upgrade our fleet of highway equipment. With approximately 16,000 employees and volunteers, community-based organizations are instrumental in creating more prosperous and inclusive communities. 
They are our partners in supporting the social and economic well-being of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians.
protects it. This year, we are pleased to announce a reduction in the small business tax rate by half a percent. This will save money for approximately 6,200 small businesses, and they can invest that in their growth and development. Globally, juris jurisdictions are relying on immigration and migration between regions to attract families and people to participate in the workforce as a means of addressing demographic changes. We're seeing Newfoundlanders and Labradorians living elsewhere returning home. We're welcoming newcomers from other countries. Our success has led to population gains over the last three years, marking the longest period of sustained growth in more than 50 years. More newcomers than ever are before are coming here to live in Newfoundland and Labrador, and they're staying here, right here in our communities, to live, to work, to raise their families. In 2023, we met and exceeded our 2026 goal of welcoming 5,100 newcomer permanent residents three years ahead of schedule. People are seeing the benefits of living here, the quality of life, the relative security and housing, which while presenting bigger challenges than ever before, is still more affordable than many locations in Canada to continue to create an environment where newcomers and residents can find success, we are investing more than $170 million so workers can continue to get the skills they need to secure a good job and employers meet their changing demands for skilled labor. And we're investing nearly $16 million to provide critical supports for Ukrainians who continue to arrive seeking refuge. This funding will help provide settlement support services that include employment, housing, and language training. More than $3 million for the Community Youth Network, which is also being allocated to help improve the well-being of youth who face barriers to accessing employment, education, and supportive services. Vibrant industries, whether they are technology, energy, tourism, agriculture, fisheries, among other industry sectors, are building a diversified economy. The technology sector is making waves and earning a global reputation for innovation, development, and capability. In 2022, this sector in our, in our economy contributed approximately $1.7 billion dollars to the gross domestic product and employed upwards of 10,000 people with many, many more needed. We are steadfast in our commitment to sustaining that momentum and growing our industries. To support industry competitiveness, budget 2024 includes $35 million to support economic development with a focus on research and development, commercialization, investment attraction, and regional development and $7 million to advance partnerships to improve connecti connectivity. Energy. Newfoundland and Labrador's offshore lower carbon oil is an important contributor to a provincial economy. We've made significant progress in positioning the oil sector to meet the world's energy needs during the energy transition. While taking steps to decrease the carbon t intensity of the sector, by participating in projects, initiatives, and groups focused on decreasing carbon sector emissions. The restart of the Terra Nova FPSO was positive for the industry and the hundreds of people it employs. We are also excited on the progress being made on the extension of the West White Rose project with first oil expected in 2026. Work Work is ongoing with Equinor on the Beta Nord project. The Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers noted in February that there remains significant potential to grow and increase exports in the future, with investments in the provinces offshore expected to increase to $2 billion in 2024. 
Exploration is occurring offshore with ExxonMobil planning the acquisition of new seismic data this summer covering the Hibernian and Hebron fields. They are also planning to drill an exploration well in the Orphan Basin this summer. Equinor is continuing with its exploration efforts with the drilling of the Sitka well planned for this summer. Supported by an investment of $1.5 million, work is also continuing on the natural gas resource assessment of the volume of gas that exists in the Jean d'Arc Basin. Wind hydrogen development. Newfoundland and Labrador has some of the best onshore wind resources in the world, which can be used to power wind turbines, generate electricity for industrial users, export through transmission lines, and the production and export of hydrogen ammonia. Following a call for bids process for onshore wind hydrogen development in the province, four companies received wind application recommendation letters, and we continue to work with these companies as they proceed through environmental assessment and crown land processes. The construction, operations, and decommissioning phases of these four projects, which range from 35 to 40 years are anticipated to have an overall economic impact of more than $200 billion on our gross domestic product and revenue to the province of $11.7 billion. Based on project plans, peak employment is estimated at approximately 12,000 full-time equivalent jobs during construction and the total capital spend is estimated at over 60 billion dollars. <laughs> Hydroelectricity. Newfoundland and Labrador generates over 90 percent of its electricity from renewable energy sources with annual exports of 3.2 terawatt hours expected in the near future. Another 30 terawatt hours are being exported annually from the Upper Churchill Falls Hydro Station under a long-term contract that was soon to expire. There are small to medium-sized undeveloped hydro projects in the province. The combined capacity of these undeveloped hydroelectric projects is in excess of 4,000 megawatts. Newfoundland and Labrador is electrically, electrically interconnected via a new high-voltage direct current transmission line to the rest of the North American grid via Quebec and Nova Scotia. Newfoundland and Labrador has some of the best known mining opportunities in the world. From some of the highest purity, quality, iron ore to recently discovered lithium, 34 of the minerals that are identified as being critical are found right here. These are the minerals that are needed by Canada and other jurisdictions and are required as part of the energy transition, climate action and adaptability. The mining industry is an important contributor to the economy with an estimated total of 8,500 people employed in 2023, 6,500 in operations in 2000s in direct construction. For 2023, the estimated gross value of mineral shipments from this province is $4.3 billion. Exploration remains a key component of our provincial mining industry with exploration expenditures for 2023 estimated to be $218.5 million. <laughs> to enhance the competitiveness of the mining industry and attract private investment, Budget 2024 includes $2.6 million to support implementation of the critical mineral strategy, $1.7 million in the mineral incentive program, including $1.3 million for junior exploration assistance and $1.6 million for a Labrador-specific geoscience program that supports exploration in frontier regions. Our vibrant arts, cultural, and heritage sectors inspire people to visit our province and for us all to celebrate our history. Last year, visitors in our province reached an estimated 487,000, an increase of 13% over 2022. In recognition of the Year of the Arts and the 75th anniversary of Confederation, 
we will be investing $10 million to support the arts and cultural sectors. We are also, we are also creating a $2 million cultural facility infrastructure fund. We continue to showcase the beauty of the province in key markets and exploring new emerging areas is made possible by a $13 million investment. We celebrate the success of the film and television sector with that which recently received 20 nominations for the Canadian Screen Awards. Newfoundland and Labrador is known for its global competitiveness, breathtaking site locations and talented workforce. Last year, 39 projects were filmed here, a record number. Many more. Many more are on the horizon for 2024. This year, the College of North Atlantic's Film and Television School had its highest enrollment to date with 77 students. The St. John's International Women's Film Festival, which was launched to create gender equity in the screen arts, has emerged as one of the best attended film and television events in Atlantic Canada. Led by Picture NL, formerly the Film Development Corporation, we are marketing the sector globally to production companies. To support their efforts, we are increasing Picture NL's operational budget by $400,000, as well as offer a $10 million for the Film and Television Equity Investment Program and the All Spend Film and Video Production Tax Credit, which provides up to 40% of a project cost with a maximum tax credit of $10 million annually per project. These measures. These measures will help us sustain and nurture the incredible momentum this industry has built. Our work to attract new routes internationally and domestically continues. It is anticipated that there will be an increase of more than 20% in inbound seat capacity in the province from May to October this year compared to the same period in 2019. With an investment of up to $3.75 million this year, we will be able to build on the progress being made, which is so important for tourism and attracting new business. Priorities including security year-round access to Europe and a direct route into the United States. Environment climate change. Our government is committed to attaining a sustained and timely transition to a green economy and to realize our net zero goals. The Green Transition Fund includes $11.5 million for projects and initiatives that focus on the greening of commercial operations, research and development, manufacturing and extractive resource development, and other areas that enhance the green economy supply chain and production effectiveness. We're also maintaining the Green tax Technology Tax Credit of 20% to help businesses with specific capital costs for green activities such as equipment for energy conservation, clean energy generation and efficient use of fossil fuels. Through the Low Carbon Economy Leadership Fund, we are supporting fuel switching measures for the residential sectors and energy efficiency measures for the private, public, municipal and nonprofit communities. To assist in the transition to electric vehicles and the reduction of carbon emissions, a $1.1 million investment is being made to install new charging stations. Budget 2024 also includes more than $2 million in funding for an enhanced new drinking water improvement initiative and flood risk mapping. Agriculture. I would like to acknowledge our late colleague and dear friend, the Honorable Derek Bragg, for his tireless advocacy of the agriculture sector. <laughs> Through his efforts, we were able to achieve our goal of doubling food self-sufficiency and drive growth 
in this important sector of our economy. Since 2016, the amount of Crown land developed and enhanced for fruit and vegetable production has more than doubled from 590 hectares to 1,212 hectares. I am pleased to announce an investment of close to $20 million in the agriculture sector to assist over 500 farmers in this province. This investment will help improve capacity through innovation, innovative applications to increase their yields, explore new markets, secondary processing, and reducing our reliance on ex imports. Fishery. Our important fishery employs approximately 16,000 people and exports products in excess of a billion dollars a year to more than 40 countries. In addition to our ongoing work with industry partners to bring our high quality, sustainably sourced products to global markets, we are allocating close to $5 million for the Atlantic Fisheries Fund and Seafood Development Program. The aquaculture sector is a significant contributor to the seafood sector, with 9% of the province's total seafood market value. Last year, its market value reached $219 million, the highest value since 2017. We expect this to increase in the coming years as new and existing aquaculture sites increase production levels. To sustain its continued growth, Budget 2024 includes $3.5 million to support aquaculture. Forestry. Every day we work with stakeholders in the forestry sector to ensure that the province is home to healthy forests. This year, approximately $28 million is allocated for a variety of initiatives, including wildland firefighting equipment, treating rising insect populations, and tree planting. We are also investing $5 million in the sustainable management of moose and caribou populations and more funding for enforcement. Labrador. There are good things happening in the big land. And we continue to work together to ensure a prosperous future. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Labrador Flag Day on March 31st. The Labrador flag is a unifying emblem throughout the Big Land and symbolizes the heritage, culture, and resilience of a proud people. Our government has committed to working, to actively working with the Nunatsi government to establish long-term, practical, and sustainable solutions that support the unique needs of Inuit communities. Budget 2024 includes $12 million over four years to continue the important work of repairing and modernizing public housing in Nain, Hopedale, and Makovic. The Integrated Health, Housing, and Supportive Service Hub in Happy Valley Goose Bay will provide integrated supports, treatment, and services all in one place. Work on this new hub continues with funding of over $30 million committed to complete the project. Important work is underway on a series of housing initiatives in Labrador West, including supporting the work for affordable housing options for seniors, supports for individuals experiencing homelessness, and expanding safe and affordable housing options to help reduce barriers for women and children experiencing or at risk of intimate partner violence. This work includes $1.7 million for the construction of a fourplex. Planning and design for a new K-12 school in Cartwright is nearing completion. Construction of the school. Construction of the school is planned to begin in 2024. Great strides were made in 2023 to lessen the financial burden on patients from Labrador, northern Newfoundland, and other rural areas who regularly travel to larger centers to access specialized medical services. We contributed an additional $1 million last year to make many improvements. And an additional $700,000 is allocated this year to support the increased demand for insistence. 
Budget 2024 also allocates approximately $18 million as part of the provincial's roads, roads plan for road rehabilitation and paving in Labrador. Additional marine infrastructure work will continue this year at McCovic and Nane, and wharf inspections are planned at several sites in Labrador. Preparations are well underway, well underway for the next Labrador Winter Games. Budget 2024 allocates $750,000 to plan and deliver the Games, an increase of $250,000. <clears throat> Expansion of the Labrador Correctional Centre is on target for completion in 2024. The upgrades permit the option to house female and male offenders in Labrador, reducing the need for transports to other facilities on the island, and allow Labrador offenders to be closer to their families. More than $800,000 is allocated for the Labrador Sport Travel Subsidy, which provides air travel support for Labrador athletes aged 18 and under, Special Olympians and sports organizations to participate in provincial competitions and development camps. And appreciating Labrador's vast mineral resources. $1.6 million is allocated for geoscience programs in the region. In conclusion, four years ago, we set a course to tackle difficult problems together. Our provincial finances, health care, infrastructure, transportation, economic growth. The work continues and expands. Housing, poverty reduction, education. Transformation is happening progress is being made. There is positive momentum and we must not waver. We must keep our compass true, our determination resolute. We must not be distracted or deterred by headwinds, noise, negativity, or by those who say it cannot be done. For we know it can, it will, and it has. It is the beginning of a great future with incredible opportunity. Let us continue the, the momentum towards a stronger, smarter, self-sufficient, sustainable Newfoundland and Labrador. Honorable the Minister of Finance, Deputy Premier. Speaker, I moved, seconded by the member for, I'm just looking to make sure I get the right name, Waterford Valley, that the debate be adjourned. The motion is that the debate be adjourned. It is a pleasure of those adopt the motion. All those in favor? Hey. All those against? Motion carried. The Honourable the Minister of Finance. Speaker, I wish to inform the House that I've received a message from Her Honour, the Lieutenant Governor. All rise. The following message is addressed to the Minister of Finance. As Lieutenant Governor of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, I transmit estimates of the sum required for the public service of the province for the year ending 31st of March 2025 in the aggregate of $9,743,070,100 and in accordance with the provisions of section 54 and 90 of the Constitution Act 1867, I recommend these estimates to the House of Assembly. Please be seated. The Honourable the Minister of Finance and Deputy Premier. Speaker, I move, seconded by the member for Mount Pearl North, the debate be adjourned. Oh. No. Next one. <laughs> the, uh, Thank the you, uh, Speaker. Speaker, I move, seconded by the member for Mount Pearl North, that the message together with the estimates be referred to the Committee of Supply. It is moved and seconded that the message from the, Your Honour, the Lieutenant Governor, together with the estimates be referred to the Committee of Supply. And I do now leave the chair. Is it a pleasure of the House to adopt the motion? All those in favour? All those against? Motion carried.
please, we shall take a few minutes to distribute the budgetary documents to honorable members. Uh -huh. <clears throat> 